Well, good morning, Sambo on Saturday. And today it's a very special edition uh, with uh, the editor of our local uh, paper in Gawler called the Bunyip Press. Today, I'd like you all to hear and uh, have a good look at this person that is uh, putting this paper together each week for you all to keep up to date with what's going on. So welcome, Sarah. Thank you for having me, Brian. No worries. Now, uh, Sarah, uh, the uh, the point of a, a local paper is so very, very important for the community. And uh, maybe you can just tell me a little bit about yourself uh, as to uh, um, how long you've been involved with journalism mm -hmm. and, and that in the area. Well, this is a bit different for me, Brian, because usually I'm asking you the questions as a, as a local councillor. So it's, it's good to see you taking on the role and, and asking, uh, asking me a few things. So um, I've been with the Taylor Group of newspapers for about five, five to six years now. Yep. And um, I've moved down from the Riverland region to take uh, this, this chair. Yep. Um, so. Yeah, I grew up in the Adelaide Hills, so grew up there, went to university here in Adelaide and then moved up to the Riverland for, for the job. So moving a little bit closer back to the family by taking this position at Gawler. And yeah, it's been a it's been a crazy ride ever since, that's for sure. Yeah, and mm. certainly to take over as an editor of a paper that's 157 years of age, mm. and uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, I'm not that old, but uh, <laughs> at 77 uh, I've sort of grown up in Gawler all my life, and certainly in 157 years uh, uh, since 1863, a lot has changed, especially the way that uh, uh, the paper is produced. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I recall many times that the paper was first of all produced here in Gawler, then it was printed at Murray Bridge and a few things like that. And at the moment, uh, where is the paper actually printed? So it's printed at our sister paper, the Murray Pioneer in Renmark. Right. So mm -hmm. what we do is we do everything digitally now. So back in the day, they used to make the plates, they used to use lead to, to make the printing yeah, yeah, plates yeah. and um, mm -hmm. to create the photos. I think they used to print them on plastic. And so now everything's um, digital. We use the InDesign program to create our pages wow. and then we yeah. send them all up through a yep. program to the Renmark office and it gets printed on the big press yeah. up there. So um, yeah, like you said, the, the paper has a long history. We used to actually be based where Dan Murphy's is now in the yep. church there. Yep. So we've moved from there to a building um, that no longer exists because it was burnt down in su suspicious circumstances yeah, um, yeah. in the 80s. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think one of our competitors actually burnt the newspaper down, oh, which is where the reject shop car park is today. Yeah, so next yeah, to the PA yeah, hotel. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah the mm -hmm. paper moved from there to um, just next door to us now, uh, the telecoms building. Yep. And we were there for quite some time until we moved into this building. So oh, that, that, that's great. And certainly, you know, with the Taylor Group and uh, uh, Ben, uh, certainly a very enthusiastic people, uh, person in, in the actual industry uh, mm. of papers. Uh, but how many actual staff do you have here? Because it uh, putting a paper together, you know, every seven days is, is, is yes, a lot of work. it's a big job. It definitely yeah. is. Mm. So I guess for immediate staff, you could say we have about 10 to 11 people here yep. in the building, but then that's not counting, you know, all of the people who supply us with content. We've got our, cart our cartoonist, George. Yep. Yep. Um, we have can't the delivery. Do George. You can't do anything without George. He's fantastic. Um, we've got our weekend sports photographers. We have the people who deliver our papers for us. We have, yeah, deliver like the delivery drivers. And we have the people who um, do like create the ads for us also up in Renmark. So it's a long chain of people who all contribute to yeah, get get this on the shelves each Wednesday. So yeah, it's, yeah no, there's a lot no, of people involved. I, I would imagine that. Of course, one of the things uh, like what we're doing here with Sambo's on Saturdays and so forth, um, it, it's also about the point that we both love the local businesses, the local people, and uh, uh, get the guys to be engaged in our community. And that's certainly what you have done since you have been you. the editor here. And uh, we're certainly very proud of it. Of course, one of those... Uh, things that uh, yourself and journalists do is come along to our council meeting. We do. And uh, that must be so much fun for you. <laughs> it is. It's always an interesting <laughs> night at council, as you 
are fully aware. Um, and yeah, like you said, we are really passionate about the, the businesses and the community that we represent. And so we act as like a bit of a platform for businesses to voice their concerns yep. to council, yep. as you would be aware. Like, for example, this week we're talking about parking issues, mm, which is always mm. a popular topic. And we're also talking about the public toilet block that is, you know, impending demolition. So yeah. mm, we act yeah. as a platform for businesses to voice their concerns when they feel like they're not being heard by council. And we also work with council to inform the businesses about what's happening in regards to development and projects. So we're a bit yeah. of a in-between mm. messenger for, um, for council and the community. So For, sh for sure, and I know at uh, the Business Development Board meetings, that's, that point's been raised time and time again from, uh, from the, the businesses that they feel if they've got a concern, they've only got to give you a ring and you'll send a journalist around and, and mm. it can be discussed. And how has con, um, COVID-19, uh, it, has it had an impact on your business because of the mm. point of going and meeting and talking to people all the time? Yeah, well, maybe we should start with the fact that the pandemic actually closed us down for yeah, a yeah, brief yeah, period. Yeah, sadly. And that, mm. Yeah, that was a real mm. shock to everyone. Yep. Um, it just hit so fast and we lost about 70% of our advertising revenue overnight yep. and we just couldn't open the doors. So I think it just goes to show how valued we are by the community because people were, there was such an outcry when oh, we closed mm, down mm, that we had mm. no choice but to reopen because, you know, people were basically bashing down the door saying yep. we need mm. our local newspaper. Yep. And mm. um, we were fortunate that around that time the, the JobKeeper payments came through from the federal yep. government and so yep. that enabled us to still employ Click all of our that. staff. Mm, yeah, mm, yeah. Mm, no one was laid off. We still yep. kept all of our staff. We've still been able to run. Yep. And the thing is, people do forget that the newspaper is a business. Yeah, We're not exactly. just a public service. No. We we need to have advertising revenue to survive yep. um, and to mm. and to print pages. It, yeah. it all costs money. And, oh my word! And mm, that's mm. why it's so important if the community wants to see the newspaper continue and to survive for another 157 yep. years. They like they do need to advertise with us and support us financially just as much as supplying content so, so so very very important and uh, mm. talking about that with the contact and everything since you've been here editor of the bunyip mm. um, is there any uh, stories that uh, uh, you're sort of proud of or that stand out uh, in your eyes yeah well i'm quite passionate about the subject of domestic violence and yep. i've actually um, over the year that I've worked here, met with a few um, female and male victims yep. of domestic violence anonymously and put together a bit of a series. I don't know if you read some of the stuff I wrote, yeah, Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I just mm, think it's, always do. Mm. I always enjoy writing about those those social issues and and using the, the paper as a, as a way to help others. Yep, yep. And that's what I'm really passionate about. I want people to know these are the resources out there. There are people going through what you're going through. Mm. Um, mm. You know, be brave, speak about what's happening to you. And so I really do enjoy going out, meeting people who have gone through like just remarkable things and yeah, sharing yeah, their stories yeah, in the yeah. hope of helping mm. others. So yeah, no, 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 that that is fantastic. And and in Gawler alone, you know, uh, and uh, certainly with the Honourable John Dawkins uh, has yeah. been a great advocate, uh, yes. you know, for uh, helping. One of the things you must find a little hard, mm -hmm. how do you sort out and separate gossip from actual news. That's that can be a really tricky part of the job because especially when you you feel like you know that the gossip is true but you just can't prove it and so yep. you can't go there which can be a bit frustrating but it comes down to fact checking and going through official channels to find out information and get comment. You know, I might be in the pub and someone will say, oh, I've heard this about that, you know, that counsellor and you go, oh, righto. And so you put the feelers out yeah. and, you, and you send through official channels. You know, this is what I've heard along the grapevine. Can you give me a bit more info? And then that's how we determine whether it's got weight or not. So, yeah, yeah. yeah it can be mm. a little bit tricky when you, you, you have your regulars coming in saying, this is what's happening. This is what, you know, council's doing or this is what the government's doing and we need to have all of the evidence and information available before we can go ahead and print something because at the end of the day we don't want to get sued so no, no, <laughs> that's exactly right and and certainly uh, you being involved now here in Gawler and we're all very proud to have you here producing our paper uh, and uh, and that but for young person getting involved uh, I mean there's a lot of people that are in uh, are getting ready to go on their, their break for uh, for the summer period and so forth and it's certainly not going to be as good as 
maybe the last uh, couple of years have been, but to get into journalism, can you just mm. give them a little bit of advice? I mean, it's well, worthwhile taking the ride. <laughs> well, right now, <laughs> don't do it because there's no yeah. jobs. Um, no, honestly, I think that a journalism degree has a has a lot of weight because you can go into so many different fields. Um, it gives you great communication skills. It gives yep. you the social media management. Um, I think even if you don't end up with a journalism job after your degree, um, it gives you a lot of, you know, like a customer service yep. skills and I think that for myself it's just I'm very lucky to be in this position because I have remained loyal to the company over so many years yep. and that's how this opportunity has presented itself. I would say to people you know like yeah definitely I, I recommend studying the degree um, but obviously there's less and less newspapers these days and with everything moving to, to other states with the yep. broadcasting perspective it's a hard it's a hard industry. Hard industry. It's a really mm. hard industry mm. to break mm. into. Mm. But, you know, I think people do really value journalism degrees because of all the other skills you get. For sure. Mm. Through mm. communication and marketing as well. Thanks to Shane and Ray and uh, Joss and the team here and for your time this morning Thank to you. tell us a little bit about, uh, well, not a little bit, but a lot <laughs> about the point of how a paper in its 157th year has now been produced in this town and we're so very proud to be all part of you. Thank you Thank very you much for Thank you for having for me, Brian. Thank no you. No worries. Thank you.